my name is David. Um, I'm from Velo. Um, today, um, I'm going to present about the um, commission in Hanover. Uh, so um, we are going to cover two points. Um, first of all, the digital trend, and then we'll move on to some case studies that we have done um, for the digital handover. And after that, we will you know, look after um, what the future will look like with the digital commissioning and handover. So digital twin, um, so we understand the, in, in terms of the communication in the industry, um, there's a lot of uh, losing communication between different um, parties like contractor, um, client. Um, sometimes uh, the contractors or subcontractors are working so hard to provide the information to the client, but um, somehow the client may don't even know what they are actually uh, looking for. Um, so. Um, that's why um, we need, you know, something to link this up, so to um, enhance the communication between all parties. And we know that there's a big gap um, between um, um, different parties, and we know that, you know, I'm not sure, but uh, when is the last time you could, you know, do a handover, you know, in days or weeks or maybe, you know, in by years. So it takes a long time and it is definitely a very painful process for everyone to collect all data that they have built uh, in the project and come up together as a package and deliver to the clients. So it's a long process and, and um, it's, it's very much um, common nowadays. And definitely, the, we know that the knowledge is losing across the project stages, you know, especially from the operation uh, stage. Um, we're not just talking about like uh, from design to construction, you lost some information about the design, and from the construction to SPL, you lost some of the SPL information. But <clears throat> for the tenant, move in and move out, and also, you know, this kind of SPL information, you could also lose um, according to the state in, in different stage. So um, digital twin, um, not just BIM. Um, don't worry, I'm not going to talk about anything on the BIM or the benefits or the function of Revit. But um, what we are going to focus is, you know, the digital twin. Basically, it, it's from the term is from the manufacturing industry. Um, so if um, not sure, you have seen some, from some of these videos from YouTube, like how they were making an automotive for BMW i8 or maybe Audi A4. Um, they were you know, using all kinds of robotic technologies. And this robotic technology, actually, they were linked with a design part that has been designed you know, like what we do in BIM. So um, what the emphasis is, um, basically, your design model is linking with your construction model and then linking with how you operate it. So, um, they always have the slogan in, in, in manufacturing world, like uh, you see what you got and you test what you, uh, you can try before you buy it. So this is not uh, untrue. So what we're talking digital trend and um, the construction industry basically is the same. Um, just like the VR that we have just seen, uh, basically we want to test it before we, um, we're using, uh, be, before it is uh, delivered. So, um, so we, there we come, we have the uh, Willow Twin platform. Um, so we, we are Willow. And our mission is actually to empower um, every person and organization to connect with the built world in a whole new way uh, by providing this platform. So the handover can be done easier. And just like one page of uh, our footprint, uh, we have 11 offices and 150 staff. Uh, we're working with uh, different clients, um, contractors, and consultants um, to deliver um, our digital engineering services. And the solution, uh, of course, digital to twin. Uh, first thing uh, on hand is we, we need a single source of truth, which basically is the BIM model, um, and for all stakeholders, so that you know, in the BIM model, it's just not like a 3D geometry. So it has all the asset information inside. And then uh, when we are talking about platform, it has to be like intuitive. So it, it's easy to use, everyone is easy to understand and operate it. And then um, definitely, uh, we're not just looking at the model. Actually, uh, management office, they don't like to look in 3D models, but uh, they, they're more interested in the analytic. Like for example, how's the energy usage? 
Um, but all these information, actually, they were all connected together. Nowadays, this information were you know, separated in different um, system or maybe from different subcontractor to handle it. But um, you know, our uh, way of doing it is to integrate it together, which I'm showing you later on on some of the case studies. And definitely, uh, with the analytic, we can predict, we can do main predictive maintenance, and then this analytic will you know, run itself and improve, uh, uh, hopefully, over time. So um, digital twin is basically a virtual replicate of you know, a physical asset that we were you know, targeting to do. And in terms of like the digital twin, this is you know, one of the cases that we have. Um, and definitely we need the asset register and our manuals and the live data collection. Live data means like it's being used and operating with inside the 3D models. So we can, you know, in the platform we can select um, the asset we have, definitely you can have like all kinds of buildings put it together as a portfolio of your company. And in each of these um, projects, um, you can actually um, choose what you want to see the asset. For example, if you want to check out the VAV box, uh, you can just search it from this platform um, and then it will bring you up um, all, you know, related information. And when you click the information, it shows you the details of these assets. It is not like uh, just like a static data, it's actually live data. So it's actually connecting to the live system. Um, and you can have, you know, the chain, um, chain result, chain diagram of, you know, what happened of this asset when it go for a time, um, how, how it's being used. And also the ONM menu, you can click it and the link bring up the ONM menu um, for any kinds of uh, use, like for some maintenance, or replace part replacement. And if you find some errors, you can definitely you know, um, make a work order. Like if you want someone to reply it, you can just in the platform um, click on this object and then you know, type what kind of issue and assign to who you want to. And then you can create the, the work order directly. So um, the for the staff, for the engineer who's received it, um, I mean, you can link it to a mobile device and then it will just pop up like a task that they need to do. And on site, they can you know, use their you know, asset tag to locate themselves. They can look in the 3D model if they want it. And then you know, they can finish the job and then report it back to the system. And on the panel side, um, the management office, of course, they can you know, um, look into the status. Um, and if it's completed, it's definitely feed it back to the um, system, the dashboard. And of course, like uh, we are, we we are, have a kind of like marketplace app, so that you can plug in different kinds of uh, sensors or um, um, device into the same platform, which uh, seems not to be able to do you know, with an existing system, so they were all separated. But this one, actually, we, I mean, we, with the help of the client, uh, actually, we work together with all these contractors, uh, management offers, to put it all together as one system. Uh, so that it can link to, you know, basically all, I mean, of course, not all, but the key items that the clients were interested to manage. Like, for example, with all these asset information, you can actually do some uh, maintenance or preventive uh, simulation, or asset checking, you know, scenario so that you know when there's something happen, you know how you can evacuate your 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 place with you know all these kind of sensing device, um, checking the procedure whether it is correct or not. So these were all linked in one single platform. And of course nowadays um, we the client try to get rid of the uh, like USB CDs and they, we are all moving to works like everything in digital in the cloud or you know, in, in their own server. Um, but not there yet, we are moving to it, but we still see a lot of this USB and, and CD-ROM nowadays for the handover package. So um, just some of the uh, project snapshots that we are working on. Um, actually, we, were, we are working with um, different types of project, infrastructure, building, commercial, residential, um, all over the world. Um, and I've selected like a few cases um, to talk about. So the first one um, is uh, 22 Bishop Gates. Um, 
it's, I mean, we work for Multiplex, and Multiplex had a requirement for a handover, you know, a digital asset um, platform, um, because, you know, they, I mean, they, they have actually, they, this is a very advanced building in, in London, and they want to have a very advanced platform to manage all this. So um, there, were, there are 16 sectional handovers, and, you know, involve 11 contractors, 400 models, 72 levels, and you know, 5,000 plus assets. So how are we gonna manage it? And uh, actually, it, it comes with like different subcontractor on different packages. Um, so at the time we were you know, working with them, actually they were not you know, quite, sure about, quite sure about the process. And that's why we need to like, um, form up some steps that we can you know, set up the platform correctly. So first of all, we need to confirm all the asset the client or interested to manage are in the model. So this is actually a big step because you know when the contractor they were doing their LOD 500 model, wow, well, wow, well, it's very detailed. But uh, this asset the client interest to manage because you know the geometry or the the equipment itself is not just like something for the asset management office. So we are making sure the asset they want to manage its model and in the correct location and also the size and everything. And then we need to tag the asset management ID to this model. So uh, once we have this asset tag uh, and then we link it with the actual model, um, so that's the thing we, we were doing you know, at the at first hand. So that we make sure that uh, in the platform when we click in uh, um, an asset, what I've just shown you in the video, um, it's going to display um, all the information, the details inside that um, related to that asset. And where we are now, we actually we have handover um, field sections and also um, completed like different uh, seven floors, and then 71 model and 45 levels, uh, 750 assets. But we are not stopping by just like handovering, you know the SPO information inside the platform. We're continuing working out with the tenancy fit out. So, uh, you know, we hand, once we got the handover model in the platform, the tenant will come in and they do their, you know, ren renovation and they do their, you know, adjustment of the, the, the offices they want to use. So at this part, we are actually helping the client directly um, to form up a process of the tenant fit out workflow so that this information in the end, we'll feed back to the digital recruiting platform so that we have you know, the, the latest information all the time. Um, so it's probably too detailed to go through the process, but in general, um, the, the SBU information will be updated to the platform together with all the assets um, that the tenant has uh, put in. And the next one is FAN. Um, we work with um, the REST um, organization. I mean, uh, it's a very specific project because um, the contractor, uh, actually they were not uh, quite sure, they, they were not that advanced, they don't know about the process, and even they were not like using very advanced projects, like, um, software like maybe, not even BIM software, you know, the model that we received or they were working on or maybe just like a 3D CAD um, geometries. Um, so we basically, in this project, we help the client to, um, again, First of all, we need to fix the model and not fix the model, but we need to get the model, link it with the asset, and also we need to check the compliance, whether this model would correct um, in there, and then we push it back to the platform. And you know, these are just some um, captures of the, uh, the model. And you can see that you know, once we identify the asset that is useful for the client to manage, and then we, we need to check whether it is you know, compliant with the um, requirement uh, of the asset uh, code ID and also the information. And during the check, uh, well, there are a lot of ways to check it. We can check it, the compliance in the platform directly, or we can you know, export it to the Excel so that you know, many different people or department can be involved in the checking process. So the red, it means like, oh, the, you know, some data is, is wrong and you need to modify it. Uh, it is quite easy to um, for everyone to understand and check. And and then investor, um, you know, we take a, a lot of privilege pre pre to work with investor. Um, what their 16 Morning Street project is 
going to be um, um, practical completion um, this month. Uh, and we are also working together with them for uh, some other uh, projects. Um, so take a look at maybe in the 151 uh, current sheets uh, in, in New York. Um, so um, this is the first time the owner, um, this is the first time the owner uh, provided, you know, the handover information during the construction. So what I mean is like in real time, you know, they were, they, they're able to check whether, you know, the contractor has put in correct information, whether this information, you know, is, is adequate and compliance to what they have set up. Um, of course, you can like, again, you can search any kinds of asset information directly from the platform. And then, I mean, this is still under construction and, and then you can um, put in, for example, you want to search, let's see the word, uh, you can search some equipment like the, the fire pump, and then it will locate you to the correct location. And of course, you can you know, bring this up, um, all the information. Such as the type and the level, location, and serial number, and who is managing it. And of course, the owner manual. Um, so this part, uh, yeah, the owner manual. So this part, it's 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 really about you. You were looking at the details, but uh, what I meant is uh, during the whole process, the client can log into the platform and check whether you know this part has input correctly or check uh, the total percentage of. Uh, uh, asset that has been put out, plotted to the digital twin platform because they can uh, make search and also um, it has also come with you know some analytic on the compliance of the uh, asset. So at this moment, there are like 100% um, asset inside, but compliance is 93%. Um, they can you know filter out those in compliance um, information and then they can check what has not been you know input correctly. So this all kind of uh, um, analytic and also um, asset information, um, you can directly do it and from the platform itself. So, I mean, for the last part, um, what could the future look like? Um, of course, there are a lot of different um, packages um, in, in the handover and also there are a lot of different systems. So what we have, uh, doing is to make it on a single panel of glass so that you can check and see everything inside the uh, integrated platform. Um, so the left side is the old world, like uh, different system, different uh, contractors or contractor, they will have their own system. They might have their own offices in you know, the same building. Um, but in the new world, what we are doing, uh, what we have done, you know, some of the projects, is like we integrate it all together into a real platform. Um, then the client can, like this, uh, can manage everything in a single panel. So this is one of the other projects we have done in um, Holland. Um, we have another system called Wheel of Well, but it's specifically dedicated to a rail system. Um, but basically, we, we do the same thing, like we integrate all different assets together in one platform and do all the management directly in the platform. Just bring up in the video. So in the platform, again, you can search, um, you know, based on the GIS information, you can search your, uh, your asset location. And then you can, I mean, if there's something wrong, there's actually some alert message directly um, um, coming up from the platform to notify you. And if you want to you know, do some maintenance work, you can actually do it clicking on the asset and you know, put in some information or, or you, you want to um, um, allocate it to you know, some company that is responsible for uh, the maintenance. And then what kind of maintenance you do you want to do. And then it will you know, zoom in directly to the location. And in this case, the system, of course, because we have you know, linked it with the GIS information, um, actually, it would be able to quickly identify the closest um, maybe engineers or maybe the service uh, team 
who could help on this thing, and then we can send um, you know, some requirement, job requirement to this team. Oh, there's some issue we want you to handle. And if they accept it, you know, they just like playing like uh, uh, this Tinder, you like snap it, and then you can, oh, I accept the job, and then you can, you know, even report it, you have arrived it. Um, so all I'm showing you is not like a video or like uh, some demonstration. It's actually a live project that is working in, uh, in, in, in Holland. Um, so um, I think the idea is we, we have one single integration to Willow to assess like best in cost smart building technology from uh, around the world. That, that's basically what we are aiming to do with the handover and commissioning. Oh, thank you. So that, that's all for my presentation. Thanks, David. It's pretty quick. Thanks very much. Yeah, no, that's all right. You're actually, you did well in- uh, Just we're actually, catching up the time. Yeah, you've, well, you've got us right back on track. And, uh, just before, uh, Summit um, Overall is just coming down to uh, close out the event. Um, so is, we've probably got time for any, one, maybe one quick question. Is there any? Uh, yeah. Um, just with the data, two questions. With the data, is that hosted by Willow or is that you host it yourself? <laughs> and the second question for me is that um, with the maintenance side of issuing work tickets, is that um, a Willow private product or is the So first, um, first question, I think the data can host, we, we are flexible because we develop platform. Um, I think uh, we prefer it to hold it in the Willow platform, you know, uh, we, we maintain, maintain it, but I think, uh, in, I think remember in one of the projects actually it was hosting client side. So I think this is really flexible. Uh, it can be done in standalone or it can it be done everything integrated together. But I think in terms of like, um, data security. Um, I think nowadays the data center is more secure than you know if you hold it at the office. You know, usually. Um, for the second question, um, um, sorry, what's the second question? Uh, the second question was, can you link it to the, the maintenance? Yes, 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 uh, yes. Um, the the demonstration I'm showing is you know the module that we created uh, specifically for this task, but. Yes, uh, as we develop the platform. Well, the idea, if you look back to you know, one of the slides showing you know, uh, what we expected to do with different module, actually we are expecting to link with this FM system so that you can, you can you know, send ticket. You can, we just bring up the interface and link it back to the FM system to make the order. So the answer is yes, we can, we can do it.